is the Hermes, the fastest ship in the universe. This is Gammon's Run episode 11, the Hermes from the Martian. Will this ship win the race? No, of course not. But will it finally shift Red Dwarf out of last place? Maybe. It's not about who wins, it's about the journey, you guys. So here is the current leaderboard and disqualification list. Now I've been thinking, which is dangerous for me, let's be real. I've had an idea though. <laughs> right, so this series, it's pretty light, right? Like I'm assuming things like constant speed or limitless fuel. I'm also assuming no obstructions on the path, warp and solar systems, all this kind of stuff. So I've decided. <laughs> Once we get to 25 ships on our list, I'm going to start Gambin's Run Heavy series. I'll go over each ship in excruciating detail and work out realistically their path, their speed, or just how far they'd actually get. If that sounds interesting to you, I don't know. If you want it, let me know. But for now, let's stay light. So, as I said, this episode is all about the Hermes from The Martian, which is one of my absolute favorite ships in all of science fiction. I love this ship so freaking much. So the Hermes uses ion propulsion to move through space. And this is when a neutral gas is held on board and then ionized, which creates a plasma. It strips some electrons from the atoms of the gas, which then creates a source of positive ions. And those ions are then accelerated using electricity. So this is a real design. It has been used on small spacecraft. NASA first proved this way back in 1998 during their Deep Space One mission. So ion thrusters allow for constant acceleration in space, but they can't be used to launch a ship into space. You still need chemical rockets for that. So in theory, as long as you have the gas and the electricity, you could keep going. And apparently the Hermes also has an onboard nuclear reactor and solar panels in order to generate the electricity it needs. So how fast is it? Well, <laughs> we know how long the journey from Earth to Mars is and they go halfway and then they'll begin the deceleration process. So we just need to figure out what the constant acceleration is, then work out how long it will take to reach the halfway point and then double that value to get their time to Andromeda. We know the original trip from Earth to Mars took 124 days. We know it covered about 110 million kilometers. And this is a pretty good distance for the Holman transfer window, which they talk about in the show. You can watch my video all about the Martian if you want to know more about what that is. We also know from the book, because thank you Andy Weir, the ship is moving at a constant acceleration of two millimeters per second squared. Now, as we know, we're in an Andy Weir world. So this means that we're not going to be exceeding the speed of light. He doesn't specify how close the Hermes could get to the speed of light like he does for Project Hail Mary. So we can be generous in this case and just say that it will top out at the speed of light like Red Dwarf. So we first have to see how far it travels before it reaches the speed of light and then how far is left to travel. Now we can use some pretty straightforward equations in classical physics to figure out how long it will take them to reach the speed of light given a constant acceleration. And it turns out it'll be around 4,753 years. So let's see where they'll be once they get to it. So this constant acceleration of two millimeters per second squared will get the Hermes to Mars in, we know, 124 days. It'll reach the Kuiper Belt, which is just out past Neptune, in two years. Reach interstellar space in four years. Travel through the Oort cloud that surrounds our solar system in 138 years. Reach the Orion Nebula in 3,777 years. Now it's at this point, once they pass the Orion Nebula, that they will finally reach the speed of light and use that to travel to the edge of the Milky Way, meaning that they will reach the edge of our galaxy in 29,386 years, traveling out across intergalactic space to reach the finish line at Andromeda Galaxy in 2,507,139 years. So in last place, it will go number six. 
I know we've made an assumption about it reaching the speed of light, but I'm still genuinely surprised that it beat Red Dwarf. <laughs> but then again, its acceleration rate is much faster than Red Dwarf's, so I kind of should have known that. But still, I'm, I'm still genuinely surprised that it's not last. So I think there might be some pushback here on this. I get it, I get it. But what's the general consensus? What do you think? Is letting it go to sea uncalled for? Should it just be disqualified? Let me know, give me your arguments. But in the meantime, let's pick the next ship. Okay, what have we got? Oh, bloody hell. What have we got? We have... Ha! <laughs> You've been asking for such a long time. We have a Stargate ship, finally. It's the destiny from Stargate Universe. I've been nervous about a Stargate ship coming into it because <laughs> especially like the, um, the, the Asgard ships, because like, we know that they can get to Andromeda really fast. <laughs> Damn it. But look, we'll see. I can't actually remember what the destiny speed is or, or anything like that. I loved Stargate Universe, though we only got one season in that, didn't we? We needed more. All right, I hope you're satisfied that you finally get a Stargate ship. So thanks for hanging out and uh, see you next time. Stay nerdy. One slot above Project Hail Mary. Two Andy Weirs right next to each other. Is anything going to come between them? We'll see.